In 2016, I sent a message to a really good friend of mine talking about how I was questioning my gender identity. Um, and she responded like this. While this might come off as harsh, I am no use in this subject. The way Tumblr views gender is annoying. I'm fine with people being born male and feeling as if they are actually female. Non-binary is also okay, but as soon as it goes into pangender and gender fluid, there is no point talking to me about it. Look, I'm trans, right? And this was a year and a half before I, before I came out. And while this message is, you know, funny on its own, it also has, um, like, some slight undertones of, uh, what, what's, what's the word? Um, all right. <laughs> yeah, um, transphobia. Earlier this year, a YouTuber by the name of Abigail Thorne came out as transgender. To many, this wasn't the most surprising thing in the world. For me, as someone who's watched her at least as long as I've been living as a woman myself, it still sort of like caught me off guard. It still took me a few days to like switch the pronouns and name around in my head. And it was, while it wasn't like, you know, surprising, it still did make me, you know, stop for a moment. <laughs> I uh, I remember this one line from uh, one of her videos on mental health and it, um, it was something along the lines of uh, when I feel my worst I I feel huge and, and at the time I thought it was really really strange how how her at the time presenting as a man had such um, a similar experience to me. I knew exactly how she felt in that in those moments, and I was like, "That's strange, isn't it?" And so, like, that was that was the first thing I thought about um, when she came out, because it was like, "That adds up. That that makes sense." <laughs> I'm only bringing this up uh, because I I recently saw this um, interview that just came out uh, with her and the journalist Owen Jones. Abigail described the relief she felt after coming out and it's like despite the struggle and let's not pretend that being trans even in the best of circumstances isn't a struggle just how happy she felt to finally be able to live as her true self and and i i would think that was a sort of universal experience amongst trans people that's that's one of the areas where biological, scientific, whatever explanation you come up with to invalidate our identities, you know, when you think about that experience of coming out, how that feels for us, that's sort of where they all fall apart. Our existences don't hurt anyone, not inherently, and, and yet people feel so threatened by us, by, by us just like living as ourselves. They say our genders aren't real, or we're, we're, we're the sex we were assigned at birth, and like whatever, but but the issue is that 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 relief that trans people feel after coming out, that's real. Like there, there's, there's no there's no pretending it isn't. Like it's a thing that we feel, and in the words of Zoe B, feelings don't care about your facts. <laughs> that moment where, where everything just suddenly feels right or, or more right than it ever had before, like 
no biological argument can disprove that. And I think that's where a lot of pro-trans rights arguments sort of fail for me. Or, or at least they don't do enough. As great as like statistics, like labels, infographics, YouTube videos are, like they, you tend to miss the most important part. You miss the people behind the gender, behind the, behind the numbers, behind the labels. You, you lose the stories that, that make us, us. The truth is that I can't speak for all trans people, binary like me or otherwise. Because, look, I, I can cite as many sources as I want, but, you know, the truth is we're all different, and one way or another, I, I will end up describing an experience that, at the very least, one trans person won't be able to relate to. And, and that's, like, that's okay. I'm not here to tell anyone else's story. I'm here to tell mine, my messy and rather painful transition. I'm here to talk about my my relationship with gender and hopefully in doing so i can help you forget about logic for just a little while <laughs> because while as a distant observer you can cite chromosomes and research papers or whatever you can invalidate us however you want but the truth is that living this kind of life just isn't quite so simple Hopefully by the end you'll understand me a little better. You'll understand my experience with figuring out my identity and how finding it has been so important to my to who I am, to to my happiness and ultimately to my well-being. And I hope in doing so I can help you understand other trans people just a little bit better. Maybe I can help you understand why coming out isn't a choice for us. Not a real one, not one between two equal options. It's one between pain and death. See, while the statistics I mentioned earlier, they're, they miss the humanity a little bit. They're not wrong. Trans people commit suicide at a disproportionate rate and the fact is that we do it a whole lot less when we don't have to live a lie when we get to be ourselves <laughs> my name is Simone my pronouns are she her and this is my story the story of how I became me Here's a question. Do you remember the moment your life changed forever? After that day, whatever happened, you couldn't look at things the same way again. Your entire world was recontextualized. That moment for me happened three years ago. It was um, it was such a mundane situation, really. I was at, I was at my godmother's house, um, and we were in the front hall on our way in or out, and I, I don't remember which, because it was, it was so long ago, but also my memory of that year is really foggy. Anyway, um, my godmother, she said, she said this thing, and I don't even fully remember the sentence or anything, but I, I just, I remember this one word, this one part of it that just, I couldn't get out of my head. She said something along the lines of, you're turning into a man. And, and I don't know, it, it was the word man for me that just sort of rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know, just, it, it fucking horrified me <laughs> in, in this like really visceral way. And that's probably the only reason why, why I can remember it so clearly, or at least if not the specifics, the feelings. I don't know, it was like, it was the word man that was the problem, right? More than anything. 
like I, I, I could be a boy, a feminine boy, a weird boy, whatever, just not a man. Cause, cause I, for, for cis people, the, the distinction's probably more in terms of emotional maturity than anything. It's like a gradient rather than just a binary, the way it was in my head, but the idea of growing up into a man, that just, it freaked me out. You know, even if realistically, I would have grown up to be a skinny, slightly malnourished looking man knowing my family's genes, you know. The idea of growing up to be a man at all, that, that just, God, I, it really unsettled me. <laughs> you know, knowing my body was if not they're already getting very close to reaching a point where where people would look at me and not see boy they'd see man that i don't know it's it's hard to put words to you know it's it's like an instinct <laughs> try putting your your left foot in your right shoe you know it's sure the shape isn't isn't correct it's it's might be slightly physically uncomfortable but that feeling of wrongness the the fact that it didn't it's it's the wrong thing that's that's not quite so logical it's it's a feeling a, a hunch uh, something built into your subconscious and at that moment i realized that the shoe and the foot didn't fit. The person and the gender, they just weren't quite right. The trans experience is often very funny in a dark sort of way. We struggle, yeah, more than the average person with depression, anxiety, eating disorders, all, all those sort of fun mental health stuff. And on top of that, we have the the beautifully cruel experience of living in a body that for most of us will never feel quite right. Yet at the same time, there's, there's a fair few parts of it that you just, outside of those moments of pain, you just kind of have to laugh at. <laughs> Losing a, my virginity was a funny one. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a fun thing that I have said, it was like, <laughs> what am I saying? We, um, we couldn't figure out how sex works. Um, <laughs> it's like, what, what are the mechanics of this? Where, where did the, where does everything go? And just, <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? And, and I laughed about it in the moment, but I don't know. It's weird because it could have been a very different experience. Like, for so long I was terrified of people seeing my body. And it's like really intimate even for cis people a lot of the time, especially the first time. Um, but it was fun, it was fine. But it could have been really traumatic. And that's something something that's interesting given the facts that it's not the only situation that I just like look back on and laugh you know like honestly it is just really funny the concept of me a girl having sex with another girl like with the, our different parts <laughs> I don't know I don't know if this is a thing other trans people experience, but like, I laugh at my pain a lot. You know, I, I was socialized male, so maybe making light of, of, of my trauma is just like part of the package. But for a long time, I, I wore my bra in the shower. I would put clothes on over my soaking wet bra just because I couldn't stomach being with my bare chest at all. I laugh about the fact that the very small amount of facial hair I had caused me so much like discomfort that I would, I, I, I'd get my face zapped with lasers so hard that I, my face 
like this part of my face here it would go red for like two days and I wouldn't leave my room because I was so embarrassed about it like it's a lot easier to laugh at that than think about how painful it is I used to um I used to say this thing a lot where it was like it's easier to be angry than sad and I think it's also easier to laugh than think about the pain but that pain is there and well humor is a coping mechanism there's only so far you can go before you actually have to deal with your pain with the things you've suffered through and eventually it it won't become a choice either you deal with it or it'll deal with you <laughs> but at the same time you know our, our existence is that the, the, the things we do on a regular basis they are quite funny <laughs> you know like inherently I you know, not funny in the in the old two thousands. Oh, she has a penis, puke thing. Cause that's that's not that's not humor. That's transphobia. It's funny because transitioning is one of the hardest things a person could go through. It's by far the hardest thing I've ever gone through, and that's saying something. Cause as a doctor, a doctor in the fucking psych ward once said to me, oh, you've been through the ringer, haven't you? And it's like, yeah, okay. I've, I've been through some stuff. I, I have a bit of a broken brain, but like, I don't know, no matter how many people tell me I'm wrong about who I am, it's, it's not gonna change anything. Not really. Like, my brain is broken, undeniably, and and I've internalized just about as much transphobia as a person can, like, to the point where for a very long time I would feel predatory for even, like, having a crush on a girl. That is a thing that hurt me for a long time. It stopped me from from being the happiest self I could be, but it's also, like, funny. <laughs> it's easier to laugh than to let it hurt me because it already has you know it's already left its scars but I don't have to let it leave anymore I talk about my pain my trauma my suffering and, and I laugh about it because that's the funniest part of it all you know it it tried to crush me and it failed <laughs> I'm still here, and I'm still me. That's actually not bad. I'm gonna call that a session. Like most queer people, I've come out more than once. Okay, a little bit more than once, maybe a few hundred times, but, you know, needless to say, at this point, it's become mostly routine for me, and outside of medical situations and, uh, well, just feeling comfortable with people, I don't really need to tell anyone that I'm trans. Back three years ago, though, that wasn't exactly the case. Like most people, the first time I came out was to my friends. That was about Marchish 2018, and I, I started going by Simone online and, you know, going by she, her pronouns and stuff like that. I started buying makeup for the first time and started dressing more and more femme until I actually started buying girl clothes myself. And, like, sure, I had a terrible sense of style, but, you know, like, not it's not really changed so 
While a significant portion of my social life was, you know, people getting used to using these new terms to describe me, that wasn't the whole story. At school, I still dressed like a boy. At home, I was still called a boy, you know? At PE, I still got put into the boys' teams, even though that didn't, you know, feel right. Oh shit, I just dropped my eyeliner. I have no idea how people do makeup on camera. This is so difficult. The whole thing kind of sucked. You know, like, it, it, it was not fun. And, you know, the truth is that even though I was kind of out, I didn't really get the best part of being out, you know, getting to be yourself. And that sort of brings me to the tougher of my two coming out stories, coming out to my family. I came out to my mom in May of 2018, which was a month or two after I was out to my friends and stuff. Me and my mom were just like watching uh, this sci-fi rom-com movie, I think it was with, um, Jennifer Lawrence and like one of the Chris's. Anyway, the movie was done and I I, I went into the kitchen. Um, my mom followed me in and I was, my heart was beating so rapidly cause I was like scared, I was terrified. So yeah, after say two months at least of sort of peeking my head out of the closet and, and hiding who I was, I told my mom I was trans. And it's funny because um, cause she asked me what being trans was and I probably gave such a bad explanation, but you know, like it didn't matter, right? Because she said she accepted me and she said she loves me and that I would, that it would be okay and that nothing, nothing would change her love for me. And that was, God, that felt so good. It was. It was so hard. It's still the most difficult thing I've ever done. But I, I, my heart has never beat that fast. Um, but it was worth it. It was necessary. I was, I was gonna wait until I was done with that year's exams. But I just, I just couldn't. I couldn't take hiding it anymore. Like, I was just coming out was hard, but. But it was fine. I told my mom and she accepted me. I, I couldn't live that way anymore, but I didn't have to. Things were going to be okay. And then, a few days later, I found out that my mom wasn't quite so accepting as she had let on. Turns out my mom thought it was a phase <laughs> or that I'd been brainwashed by the internet somehow or whatever. I don't know. She, she didn't want to deal with it, I think. Um, and for two months, it sucked, possibly even harder than it had before. Every day I'd go to school and I'd ignore my anxiety and, <laughs> and the facts that I was living as a gender that I was far more than ready to abandon. And then I'd come home and the people who knew that it hurt me would continue to refer to me as that gender. And it would hurt even more than it already did because they weren't willing to change because it was just a phase because I was brainwashed by the internet <laughs> my, because my fucking eczema cream turned me trans like that's that's not even a joke that's a thing my mom said to my psychiatrist six months later like it was mad but you know the, 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 it's it's kind of a thing though right like it was denial <laughs> through and through. But uh, the truth is that it could have been a lot worse. Even if my parents sucked with names and pronouns and whatever, 
and it still took another year for me to be even comfortable at home. They still got me an appointment with their GP as soon as they could. And, and that, that put me on the route that got me to where I am today. And I'm really grateful for that, even if they, you know, made me feel like shit a lot. <sighs> the thing is that while it could have been a lot worse, it was also the worst part of my life for a very long time. Being trans was hard, but living with people who didn't accept me was... That just made it so much harder. I knew from before the day I came out that that even if I wasn't sure on the specifics, I knew the general rough shape of who I was, who I wanted to be. But my parents couldn't accept that. I never really needed them to accept me. Like, I, I knew it would take a while. I, I didn't even need them to, to see me as their daughter. But I, I, I did need them to try. I needed them to do the bare minimum, to to call me by my real name, the name that I chose, and to call me by my correct pronouns, <laughs> because that's the least you can do for anyone. And that's the simple fact that, like, pronouns are not easy to change. Like, it, it does take a bit of conscious effort, but it is the bare minimum you can do for any human being. You can believe I'm a man all you want. You can think I'll never be a real woman because I don't have the right parts. And even if I do get bottom surgery, it'll just be an unlubricated fuckhole. But, <laughs> like, come on. How old are you? Do me and people like me. Just one common bit of decency. Use our names, our real names, because you do it for a cis person, and you do it every time someone gets married and they change their last name, or they just change their own fucking name by a deed poll or whatever. Because cis people do that too, and you still call them by the name they prefer. Do it because you're not 12 years old. <laughs> and. Calling someone the wrong gender wasn't a very good joke even back then. And do it because not doing it hurts people. Maybe not a lot. Maybe every time you call me a slur, I'll... It doesn't break me, you know? Maybe... Maybe you're doing this because you think you can harass us into submission, but you can't. You can make our lives a whole lot shittier, but we'll still be trans. We'll still be ourselves. Maybe you will force us back into the closet and... Oh no, we've killed ourselves. Who could have seen this coming? But, like, I don't know, maybe you want that. Maybe you hate us so much you want us to die. I really hope not. I, I hope people don't actually truly believe that. But I know some people do, and some people go far enough as to kill us themselves. Maybe you just think misgendering us is harmless, but it's it's not. It's an act of violence, even if you're not doing the, the doing it yourselves. You, you are enabling a culture that kills us. Making that choice is violent because it leads to violence. And every trans person who dies in a hate crime, they die because of the culture that makes hating us seem acceptable, that makes debating our existence neutrality. And doing that means the blood of innocent trans people will be on your hands. And you can't wash them clean. Because when we're dead, we're dead. And there's no coming back from that. So you know what, do whatever. I, 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 I can't make you change your mind. I, I really don't think I can, but just at the very least, don't play the moral high ground, because you don't have it. Words are words, <laughs> but words have power. And when you choose to do the things that you do, to spread the hate that you do, you are contributing to our deaths. Maybe you're not pulling the trigger yourselves, but 
You sure are putting us in the line of fire. And you can evade blame all you want, but the responsibility is on you. There might not be much of it. You might have played such a tiny, tiny role that it's not even worth considering, but... But even a little bit culpable for the death of a human being... I don't know how I'd sleep at night. The people are dead because of you. And people like you. So yeah, don't, don't call me a man, because... Fuck you. Fuck you. <sighs> so that was a lot. <laughs> the past few years, though, they have been a lot. <laughs> Trying to unravel my good memories from the bad, the happy times from the not so happy times, it's, it's tough. Since the day I realized I wanted to be a woman, my life has been kind of messy. <laughs> Reflecting on my transition without also considering the role my other mental illnesses played is well, basically impossible. For the couple months I was sort of peeking my head out the closet, my anxiety sort of reached a whole new high. And it wasn't until I came out fully that I really did start to feel comfortable. But that period before I was out was tough. Not only was I dealing with my transition, a completely changed worldview, my entire, my entire universe, as I put it, being reconceptualized. That was enough on its own, but also I had to deal with the facts that people might not be okay with it. People might not be okay with me. I don't know, like that wasn't, that wasn't all it was. I, I wasn't, I guess I wasn't ready for everyone to know yet or I would have pushed harder. Like there was a reason I initially wanted to wait until after exams to come out, you know? I, I, I looked like a boy, it sounded like a boy. I. I dress like a boy, you know, that stuff. I, I really wanted to come into school that September and just pass completely, but um, that wasn't entirely realistic. There was like still a lot of fear even after I didn't have to hide it anymore, after school was done for the year. That summer was one of the scariest points of my life because like I didn't have to hide it, but just the idea of people finding out still terrified me. You know, there was this, um, this one time I was walking, walking home from after seeing my friend Ray in Dublin, and, and I, I saw someone from my school, and I, my phone was dead at this point, right? I pulled this dead phone from my pocket, and I pretended to be scrolling through it, right? I refused to make eye contact. Aside from the one or two times I went to see Ray, you know, I, I was scared to leave my house at all for anything. You know, I, I couldn't step foot out the door. <laughs> I. It was, um, because it wasn't just the fear of people finding out. It was that people might find out and do something about it. Once that fear started subsiding, when I was fully out at school and every part of my life, really, I, um, I found the worst part was in actually being trans at all. It was, um, it wasn't existing, it was, it wasn't the dysphoria, though that was not fun. And I picked up more than a few unhealthy coping mechanisms to deal with that. I uh, know the, the worst part was how people saw me, how people treated me, what people called me, what people, what people said to me. And um, it was knowing that People would hate me for being who I am. And, you know, as a white person, that, um, that wasn't something I was really used to. <laughs> the thing, though, is the thing worth really honing in on is the fact that not once did any bit of transphobia from outside of the trans community ever make me question my identity. 
Not once did getting called a boy or slurs or, or anything. That didn't make me feel like less of a woman. It hurt me a lot inside and out, but it didn't change who I was. It might've made me want to change, but it never worked. One thing I really worried about when I first came out was being seen as a trender. Which is, which is funny in itself, because it's like, oh no, you're, you're questioning your identity. What an awful person you must be. The whole thing never really sat right with me, but, um, you know, it, it was still something that I worried about. I mean, my, my own family, all four other members of my family, they all thought it was a face. And yeah, I second guessed myself a bit because of it, but it didn't actually make me less sure of who I was. Not at the core. Maybe the specific details a bit, but at the end of the day, I knew where I stood. Roughly. As you um, saw from that screenshot in the opening, I thought I was non-binary for a while. And you know, like I know now that's not me, but the one thing I was sure of is that I wasn't a boy and I didn't want to be a man. That I was so certain of that. Um, but I didn't quite feel like a girl either. I mean, the simple fact is that gender is really fucking complicated. I am a girl. That's the place where I feel most comfortable. But it did take me a little while to become 100% on that. Questioning is really hard. There, there, there's a reason it took me as long as it did to actually find myself. Like. I knew something was wrong from the start of puberty, but I wasn't out until 15. I feel like a lot of that comes down to the just sort of normalized transphobia of our society. Seeing that transphobia internalized by my friend, like, she wasn't the only person who I knew who was like that. I, I, I was on an internet that was like that. To me, really, the whole thing is just, it's just proof of why the whole gender critical thing is such a failure, such a, a bad philosophy, because it doesn't work, you know? It, it doesn't do what it really wants to do, which is stop people from transitioning. It doesn't do a damn thing for people's dysphoria. All that it really achieves is hurting us. It doesn't change who we are. It, it might make us hate ourselves and might force us back into the closet for a while. Where either we'll stay for the rest of our lives hating ourselves, or we'll come out a little bit older, a little bit more developed in our body, and with a lot further to go in a transition. <laughs> that is, of course, if that's the road you want to go down, but even just on its own, the fact that you're not living as your true self for so long is... And when it's not necessary either, that's, that's the worst part. Because you've already figured yourself out, but you were pushed back into rejecting that. Making us pretend to be people we're not, it, it doesn't change the basic fact that we're not cis. It doesn't work. It, it just delays the inevitable. It just makes us live a lie or it kills us. For me, it was just a delay. I, I got lucky, but... Um, the truth is, and I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it here, trans people kill themselves a lot. A lot more than cis people do, a lot more than straight people do. I know I, I talked shit about those statistics earlier and I keep bringing them back, but like, they paint a really stark picture. But there is hope. The truth is that trans people in accepting environments do better. We die less. So. You know, being skeptical of our existence, that's, that's not neutrality. In the same way, misgendering us isn't harmless. It's contributing to a system that kills us. To a culture that kills us. To a culture that allows people who murder us to get away with it. Maybe it's indirect, but you are contributing to our deaths one way or another. I used to really beat myself up for not coming out sooner. Um, I mean, like, I was 15. 
That's not really the kind of age you expect kids to be making major life decisions, but I don't know, like I'd felt the way I did for, for years before I came out, before I told anyone. But when I'd see my psychiatrist a few times, it was probably early 2019, she, um, she said something along the lines of, uh, and this is when I said I wanted to go on hormones, that it was too soon to make those sort of changes, so those sort of decisions. And that just made it so much worse. It was like, oh, if I had figured this out sooner, I could be on hormones now before my body was going to make changes that would hurt me. And that's awful that I, that I beat myself up for not being able to figure myself out fast enough. Maybe with, with medical procedures like, like hormones, where there are irreversible changes, there's like, it, it, it makes sense to, to be careful about it. Here's the thing though, if being trans was seen as normal by our society, if, if questioning your gender was something every teenager did, I might have come out at 13. I might have understood the feelings that I was feeling. Would I have waited so long to come out? Would, would I have come out younger and even with the same two year waiting period? Would I have ended up on blockers at 15 instead of 17? I don't know. Maybe things would have gone the exact same. Um, Maybe I wouldn't have gotten so lucky. But if coming out on its own wasn't so hard, not only would more people do it, and they do it sooner, they'd be happier. They'd be able to deal with what came after a whole lot easier. And even if that wasn't the case, at least they would get to live a few less years of their life as someone they're not. It sounds unrealistic, doesn't it, to imagine a, a trans coming out story as anything other than difficult, painful. But the same could have been said for gay people two decades ago. Things change, society progresses, and things aren't perfect, but more young gay people are coming out than ever before, and as far as I'm concerned, that is a net positive. People deserve to love who they love without it being a secret. And the same goes for people being who they are. I am hopeful that someday people like me, trans people, gender non-conforming people, will be able to live in relative peace. I hope we won't have to live in fear or hide who we are or deal with the consequences of not doing so. I am hopeful that people who grew up the way I did with so many, so many things that just make so much sense in retrospect don't have to, have to live with the consequences of not being able to put words to how they felt for so long. I hope they, can find themselves sooner and they don't have to write off as many years as I have. So how do we get there? I um, have no fucking clue. No, um, but it, it is really complicated though. Um, not unlike gender, uh, the, the world in which we live is very layered, um, as Shrek would say. <laughs> That's not funny. You know, uh, there was that, um, that bullshit outrage a few years ago about um, people being criminalized for, for misgendering trans people. And it's like, if it was a real law anywhere, and it's, it's not, it would just be a band-aid. It, it does not address the root cause of misgendering outside of it just being ignorance. It's transphobia. The truth is that intentionally using the wrong names, pronouns, whatever, that's just a symptom of a much bigger disease.
There was this meme that went around a few years ago. I don't know if you saw it. It's just um, not real, obviously, but it said something along the lines of, why would I ever be scared of a gay person? Um, it's, it's weird because um, it does actually bring up an interesting question. Like, is homophobia, transphobia, queerphobia in general, is that, is that just hate or is there a component of fear to it? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's obvious that some transphobes, they, they do hate us. Like, viscerally, <laughs> I've been told to die because I was trans before. But a lot, of tr a lot of transphobic people, they don't think it's hatred. And that is where fear comes in, I think. Because a lot of transphobia comes from a lack of understanding. You can't understand trans people and think every trans woman is a predator who 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 put on a dress <laughs> to um to go into women's toilets and sexually assault them and like that's 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 stupid in itself because men need to pretend to be a minority to get away with sexual assault right right choosing to accept misconceptions about us and not, and not challenge your, the biases that you have about people like us, that, that is convenient. And a lot of it also comes down to the fact that the people who spread these misconceptions have a lot to gain from hating us. There's a lot of financial incentive in telling people what they want to believe. It's easier to see a bee as a potential threat than, than as something that only causes harm when when it's threatened. It's easier to see Middle Eastern people as terrorists than, than address the reality that Christian and Islamic terrorism are built upon fundamentally the same ideologies. It's easier to see trans people as predators, as brainwashed youths, as, as, as part of a trend than and to question things that you've known to be true your entire life, than to question the fundamental basics of your reality. I empathize with the struggle. I really do. It's, it's a lot harder to wrap your head around people like us than, than two men holding hands, you know? But that's about as far as my empathy goes. I empathize with the difficulty of transitions of any kind. But it doesn't go any further than that for me. See, trans people, we don't, we don't get to choose to have our frames of reference changed. We don't get to choose whether we recontextualize our respective realities. That's not something we get to choose. Either we do or we die. I mean, how we may not die physically, but living your entire life pretending to be someone you're not, that, that's at the very least dying on the inside. For cis people, though, the situation is different. You have a choice. You can choose to believe the things you've always been told, to stick to science that was outdated even when you learned it, or you can, you can choose to deconstruct your preconceptions your worldview and rebuild it anew in a way that allows you to accept us. But it's easier not to. <laughs> I want to be able to empathize with, with people who are making that decision, but I just can't because again, it does a whole lot more than, than just upset us. And it does a whole lot worse. We exist in a way that isn't convenient to a lot of people's narratives. We exist. <laughs> the worst a lot of trans people ever do. I don't empathize with you because I've fought my, my mind, my prejudices, my thoughts for every day as long as I can remember. I, I, don't, I don't empathize with you because that battle goes on every day for me. You just have to do it once. You can call it basic biology, common sense if you want, but your common sense is fucking senseless because it simply exists to confirm what you already believe. 
what you want to believe. You can deconstruct my gender all you want, my appearance and my identity. You can enforce a gender binary that's even more restrictive than biological sex. And you know what, you can call me whatever slurs you want to, but fuck you. If you think I'm gonna let you call it anything other than hate, because that's what it is. I'm not gonna pretend that you're not allowing the harm that is done against people like me to happen. Because you may not hate us as people, you certainly hate the idea of us. I am a woman. I am trans. I am mentally ill and my sense of humor is more than a little bit twisted, but I, I am who I am and nothing you say is ever going to change that. You can deconstruct me all you want, but I will just pick up all the pieces and put myself back together again. And rest assured, I'll do a good job. I will, because uh, I've done it once before, after all. And I'll do it again. As many times as I need to. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue. Myself. What a wonderful world And I think to myself What a wonderful world